Before we start uh, the show, and I'm very excited about our guest today. Wait, 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 wait. Can I get some more coffee before we go? <laughs> I can get some more. Sorry. I'm incredibly excited uh, about our next guest on the CS Dupla C show. But before we get there, a big thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed. I can just tell that you're incredibly intelligent and have impeccable taste. So thank you very much. And um, I'm glad you chose my podcast out of the millions of other podcasts that are out there. But let's get straight into the show. Gareth McKellen, do people call you Soldier Boy? Like do, when you're walking around, do people call you Gareth G or is it Soldier Boy? Because I've seen all three, even Mr. McKellen at times. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, the people that know me obviously will call me by Gareth. I think that's my close personal circle or family and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I've, I've I think I've been called all of those. <laughs> um, it's still, you know, people. I mean, I guess people do still recognize me, and uh, you know, I have I have some good converse, conversations with people. People want to know a lot and they yeah. ask questions, which is great. It means our sport is growing, and that uh, people they want more knowledge. Um, yeah, I suppose it's just as the time changes, it changes. I think now more I'm getting being called Gareth or, you know, obviously if it's a company function, yeah. it potentially is Mr. McClellan or whatever the case is, but, you know. That's cool, man. I, I like respect where respect is due because I think if there was a Hall of Fame, and, and isn't there, doesn't NOS Boots have a sports Hall of Fame, South African sports Hall of Fame? Because you should definitely be in the EFC Hall of Fame. You should be the first name with his plaque and I mean it goes without saying you are the pioneer you're the first MMA athlete to have built a brand from the sport yes I know there were guys South Africans who went to the UFC before you um, but you were the first guy that embraced the opportunity brought the soldier boy brand out and paved the way for so many other people I've seen at EFC events at other events Young athletes, uh, past, present, guys who are competing for belts come up to you like Mr. McKellen, Gareth, Soldier Sol Boy. There's so much respect. How would it make you feel if there was a Hall of Fame and, and you were inducted into the Hall of Fame? Because I've seen Daniel Cormier, how what much it meant to him for the UFC Hall of Fame. Jose Aldo, I mean, just some of the guys. I think you deserve a spot there. And, and Cairo, if you're watching, come on, man. This is a legend here. He's, he's MMA royalty. Let's get him in the Hall of Fame. Thanks, yeah, that's uh, kind of you. No, it's kind uh, words. honestly, um, I mean it. I think, I, I mean, I think the whole thing is a journey. Um, there was a lot of different spaces in it. Uh, we didn't have anything to bounce off. We kind of had to just run ahead, bang, hit the head, turn, <laughs> bang. And then eventually you just got to a stage where you try to do that less and less. Um, there were different guys around me. I think my brand was built off a few things. I think it was my own investment into it. I think um, it was the part that other people played within that uh, space, uh, coaches, uh, Richie and those guys and how they developed me in the early days, um, training partners. I mean, I, I trained on the mat with some of the best fighters this country's ever seen. Uh, guys who, it, if there was an opportunity and we had had the recipe, would be lighting the UFC up now. I mean, if it was our time and our era, it would have been a scary thing to see. We had some real killers uh, in and amongst us that sharpened us. Um, you know, I, I had a good teacher. I had my dad. My dad taught me how to be a businessman from a very young age. And um, he, he showed me how to align things and put things together. And a lot of people might have thought it was luck in the beginning. But I had good experience around me teaching me what to do at, at, at the correct time. I think it took a long time for my dad to buy in. But once he saw the potential, he was he was right behind me and he was giving me guidance all the time. And, you know, that that taught me a lot about business, which I carry today. Um, uh, Hall of Fame, I know there is a sports Hall of Fame. I played in a few of their golf days and there's some elite in that uh, in those brackets. There's some of the best sportsmen this country's ever seen. We don't have anyone from MMA. That's what I'm trying um, to say. I think it's all about timing. Yeah. There's a time where it will happen. There's... Uh, you see the rise of our current superstars and what they're doing on the highest platform and what they're going to achieve. And once they achieve those heights, the world is taking notice now. Mm. They're all of a sudden going, hey, um, you know, who are these South Africans? And then they start to invest in our, our history and, and our lineage and it gives that uh, 
a bigger kind of viewership, more people know about it, they start to understand our platforms in, in EFC and, uh, and and where we've adapted ourselves and how we've adapted ourselves in there and what guys are achieving. And then you see the level of mm. athlete that comes out of the EFC. I mean, I, I don't care what anybody says. I, I've been around the best fighters in the world. I've seen virtually every platform there is in the competition that's there. EFC houses some monsters. There's guys in in those organizations with the right guidance and in the right direction. You can turn them into superstars. It's a good breeding ground. Yeah. Um, you see that in the guys that went before, the guys that are there now, and the guys that are coming through. You can see the strength and how it's grown. Uh, so we are in a phenomenal space. That will give the sport the coverage that it deserves and then uh, the, the respect. And then those stores start to open. And then yeah. when they do their homework, they'll see, okay, these are the guys that were they're the pioneer. Uh, yes, I was a massive part in making the sport successful, but I can't take the credit for it. You know, there was there was lots of different factors that played a role. You know, I was just the front guy, I was the face that was making the noise. I gave people this crazy lunatic who was willing to die inside there um, and uh, who went was willing to go to war with anybody that yeah. was put in front of him. Uh, and people bought into that. There was different things that they saw. There was this guy who was always respectful to the kids. I always gave them time. There was one, one promise I made myself. I would never turn away a young kid. You know, I made myself accessible to the fans, people like that. Um, and then in those type of things, I tried to be the best version of mm. myself. You know, that's not always easy. Yeah. You, you, you you go wayward, you pull yourself back. As long as you know what the direction is and you try and keep that course, you become a good example. Um, I led from the front. Uh, I believe that I did it with respect and honor. Um, I think that was a big success and when people dealt with me. Um, and then I also learned to be able to handle myself in different environments where uh, people... People see who you are and they then, you know, they talk about that and they respect that. Um, yeah, I can't say I was perfect. I'm no, 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 fair <laughs> you enough. Know, I, it was, there were a lot of mistakes on my behalf on the way, um, on the journey. Um, some not so great, some okay, you know, but that's part of it. That's part of the journey. It's all about learning and growing as a human, I, I guess. Um, well, yeah. I uh, mean, th it, it was the brand for me, like... I obviously have a memory of you running uh, around the, the rugby fields of Glenwood. Um, Long time ago. Yeah, yeah, rugby ball under your arm, like very proud, like feisty guy. Um, uh, and you were at the wrong school. I was at the best school. You know, that's sort of <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit biased towards still, Glenwood, obviously. DHS. Still a question to this day. People ask me, why did you go to DHS? Because you were at Glenwood <laughs> more than you were at DHS. But that's a story for another day. But... I just remember the whole beard, the soldier boy, like um, you, you, the, your, your ink. You know what I mean? It is all about this ferocious warrior, but he was like clean cut, if you know what I'm saying. So where did the soldier boy come from and where did the beard, because it was literally when you signed the fight, right? That's when you started growing the beard. Yeah. When that camp started. Yeah. So that, it was, it, it was quite crazy because it, Soldier Boy just developed over time, you know. Um, my belief system changed. My mentality changed, you know, and I became that. In the beginning, it was, I mean, this is a long time ago. This is when UFC had only just kind of hit the fray. People were buying raw. the tapes yeah. and stuff. It was <laughs> raw. You know, we were fighting in tents in the backyard uh, of uh, the casinos somewhere underground in, in <laughs> warehouses, somewhere in park, car parks. It was just, it was a wild thing to do, you know? And it was very like, <laughs> people would, were just amazed at why people would do something like this. And the group of guys I was with, and that's back in the, the Hawkeys, um, the Van Stardens, uh, Will Bentley. Um, oh man, who else was in that team? A couple of other guys. But those were the key key group of guys. And, you know, I decided now I was going to do MMA. I mean, I, I all I wanted to be my whole life was play rugby. You know, I was, that was my desire. But I hadn't learned how to match the, the work ethic with the desire, you know. 
I didn't work as hard as what I should have to get there. I think if I put the same investment that I did into MMA, into rugby, I would have, I believe I could have made it. Um, but but it was knows? different back then growing different. up. Different. Got involved different. through rugby into MMA and I just, I took to it. It was the most incredible thing. It was like, I got into it. I remember my first fight. I got into a, a boxing ring, small kickboxing ring. And, uh, and we climbed into each other and it was all sorts. It was just a, it, it was a street fight in, in, in a, uh, um, were there gloves? Did you at least have, no, you had MMA gloves okay, on, so but there was no, but there was no, <laughs> there's no <laughs> technique what you see now. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. There was some catch wrestling and a bit of wrestling, grappling, uh, uh, submission wrestling, some grappling in it. It was kind of just a little mix and mash from experience people we had had in the country but it was a fight that's what it was and that intensity that fear that excitement that adrenaline that f never say die i like i'm i'd rather die than lose just made up this concoction and i sat down after the fight and i was like my word a few other words i could use in that <laughs> but it was it was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever experienced in my life. And I was addicted like this. So what happened after that then? What, did you go and look for Jim? I mean, you had a few, like you said, the Hawkeyes. So I was and, with the, I was with the fun, uh, the fun starters and those guys. Uh, uh, I was with uh, Kevin. Co Kevin was coaching us at that time. Um, and there was this thing of WWE and the names and, oh, this is my name. And so I, I picked a name and I was like, I'd always, always, uh, being a soldier was the top of my list, like, but my parents were never, ever having it. Um, so I respected that. It was like, for me, when I looked at, the, you know, growing up as a kid, you look at a policeman or you look at a doctor. Yeah. I looked at a soldier and I was like, wow. You know, I had family that were in the army. My dad was in the army. I was like, it was this thing. Um, and th that was kind of the direction. If I'd had the chance, I probably would have gone. But, you know, my parents were like, you're going to die. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> also, Knowing you, you will die. You won't live very long. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that was the right decision. So it was a soldier. And then uh, people who don't know me uh, always saw me as a serious guy. But I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm so playful. I just want to joke with people and have fun. And, you know, I like to play tricks on people and be serious with people in a joking manner. Like it, people... I don't think people get me, but that's kind of who I am. So I tried to, I wanted something to represent mm. that. And that's where the soldier boy came from. And it was by fluke. It was something that I thought up, I put together and I never ever thought it would have become what it, um, what it did. So that uh, was I the mean, salute. Was that the salute and everything? So those things were built in okay, as we okay. went along. The beard was actually Richie Kwan. Okay. Um, I, I'll never forget. He was like, I, I had no, I had grown. He's like, Oh, I grow the beard. It looks cool. So I grew, we we're growing the beard, you know? And then my, my hair, I, I had hair like I did now, and <laughs> I, we had a we were at a party, and I was like, "Rich, I got to shave my head," and he was like, "Yeah," and we got clippers and we shaved it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Wow, okay. that's how we got that because it, yeah, it was that, that Kratos God of War look that was and going kind on. of like if you go back to the first fight that I had in in EFC, you'll see I fought with hair. I had a bit of a beard. It was one? Yeah, EFC I, one. EFC one. I had a bit of a beard, but I had hair. I didn't have bald hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then kind of everybody took it to it. And I was like, oh. And then as it went, I shaved. Because I shaved it after the fight. Because I was like, man, I just want this thing <laughs> off. I took it off. And uh, people were like, oh, why did you shave the beard? And I was like, no, you know. I shave it after every fight. And then that just <laughs> spread like yeah. wildfire. It was, it was mad. Like, uh, Tyler, can we can we just find the picture? Sorry. I know you've got uh, one of your, your fights lined up. Well, we've got, but Tyler... Just let's have a look because I want to see, just to, for our viewers, just to remind them what Soldier Boy looked like with a shaved head and the beard and standing. I think one of the, the first UFC ones is a cool picture. There's a few pictures. Of you, there you? are. If there is some, uh, there's some good ones out there. You know, there's, I have some favorites. Um, no pressure, Tyler. We get it. Some big putting, moments. Putting under pressure on a Some Monday big morning. moments in there, you know. Some so incredible also, moments, so, some, also some some bad some, moments. You know? Some of them were not so great. Like there we go at the top there. Ooh. I love the the salute. You know, obviously 
Remember that? Yeah, that was, yeah. man, that was so wild, wild day. Eh? It's wild. I think I did a um a cover of You did a few magazines. Yes. Did you did you, did you men's health or was it I was in men's health you with were Don. In me, yeah, yeah, with Don. And was it FHM maybe? No, man. Maxim. Um I think it was Maxim. Yeah, with a beard. That that was the kind of the the sort of that look there. That I think a whole of South Africa were like just captured with that sort of thing, you know. It was that beard was thick, man. Yeah, Shaved man, head. Dude, that thing got yeah. that thing got big sometimes. Wow. <laughs> it was massive. I have a bit of beard. I was envy, actually got a funny uh, <laughs> uh about Trickus, he sent me on uh, Instagram. He was like, he sent me this. He goes, now nah, you cheat. <laughs> and he sends me this clip about how they talk about how the beer tap source <laughs> punches. Uh, okay. And he was like, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just, it was crazy. You, uh, these, we, as we, and like we went to, then it was the salute that was put on. And then I got just a, uh, I got to a stage where I was asking people to give me a hurrah at the end of the fight. And these things just built and they were never, it was weird because it wasn't ever stuff I was like, I went home and sat and thought about it. It was just an idea and I was like, hey, that sounds cool. Let's try that. You know, I tried some things that didn't work. Yeah. I tried things and they became massive for me. I mean, they became defining for me. It was hard though because it it made me, put me in a position where I had to represent this brand all the time. Um, and you start to sometimes lose yourself in that and you forget who you really okay. are. And... Big you know, branded trucks and yeah, the endorsements. Like, and so, you know, you, you. there was a few times I had to check myself okay. where things started to get away with me in terms of myself and my ego and what I represented. But you were on top of the world. at one. I mean, in the EFC, before even the UFC, you were the top dog, man. You were, In that middleweight division, you were the top dog. Yeah, but it brought a lot of things with it. It brought lights and cameras and, yeah. uh, you know, high, fast life and... It's easy to get caught up in that and easy to to stray and get pulled to one side. So, you know, you've got to be in the position where you can check yourself all sure. the time and be honest with yourself. That's the thing. You know, so I, I, that's something that I continue to be today is be honest with myself. You know, when I'm not being the person that I should be, I, yeah. I'm the first to say, hey, catch a wake up. Um, you know, sometimes it's maybe could be a bit too late, maybe not. You know, there's, the journey's been tough. There's been a lot of tough times and there's been a lot of good times in yeah. it. I never give I never give off the world. Uh, you know, it's been the most incredible experience for me. I traveled the world. You got uh, to train all over the world. And you spent well. time I in spent New Zealand, some, right? In beautiful places. I, I, I got taught by some of the, the best coaches I've ever come across. Guys who just were defining in, in me as a... As who an stands out? I mean, I'm, uh, it's, I'm putting you under the pressure here. Yeah? There's obviously a lot, you know, the Richies, uh, that sort of thing, but... You you were on a mission to gain as much knowledge as possible, and you you were in the U.S., uh, Canada, uh, New Zealand, all over trying to absorb knowledge, right? So each guy brought something different, mm. you know. Each guy taught me a different value. Um, each guy gave me a little bit of knowledge. Um, they were, each guy played a, a part in defining me. You know, right back, Ryan's son, mm. Kevin. You know, I've had guys, I've been lucky. I've had guys in terms of MMA were, who were remarkable in their time period. Yeah. When they were there, they were the relevant guys. They were the guys supplying the information at that level. You know, each f space. Faraz had a, had, a, had a big impact on me. Um, I would have loved to spend more time with him. Richie, Richie imparted a lot on me. Richie and I had an exceptionally different relationship. We were close, um, you know. He was the guy that was in the front in the front line when we were building Soldier Boy. Mm. He was the guy that was working to make me better, you know. He had a massive part to play in who I am. Yeah, he's. he's he was probably, I mean, he's my yeah. longest coach. He's yeah. the guy I spent the most time with. You know, I was under his tutelage for a very, very long time. But you guys, that Fight Fit Militia chapter really sort of at that stage set the bar for MMA in South Africa. I think with all due respect to other gyms that were around, it just appeared like 
FFM were just that step ahead. And in, is that because you guys bought into sort of Richie and Chef and the environment because you had killers in that gym? You guys were ahead of the pack. Man, <laughs> any time you take a group of individuals and quite a substantially large group, oh, in the beginning it was uh, 10 individuals and then it got to 15, 20. Any time you take a, a group of individuals who 100% buy into a direction and give 100% of themselves to that direction. You're just going to create a monster. Mm. It was a monster at the time. In its time, FFM was globally one of the best gyms in the world. Yes, we were still hidden gyms. We were still guys who were only in our platform. I traveled the world with most of those guys. I saw them compete against the best fighters in the world and what they did to them. Mm. So like I say, I say that if I look back to the early chapter of EFC and that portion going the first, say, quarter to half of it, the guys that were there 10 years later would have been a different story yeah. completely because we would have known how to operate. We would have known how to build it. But then again, that's part of that chapter. You know what I mean? We had to do the hard yards yeah. and you grind the ourselves way. to the bone yeah. to build – a working module. I mean, Richie defined MMA in this country. Then guys like Monet came and took from that and took from other places and built, is building this this monster yeah. who's <laughs> producing the best fighters in the world. I mean, they've got a stable of guys that I, I can promise you, you're going to see them slowly in the UFC. They're going to infiltrate the UFC. There's And some monsters in there. And there's a guy who's fighting for the title mm. at the UFC who's also destined. Uh, so this is, the, I mean, if you look at, that's just a different conversation Absolute, in South Africa. Yeah, no, game, we'll you get know? there, we'll get there. Um, yeah, and they, we just, we we had this brotherhood. We would die for each other. We got on the mat. We loved each other like brothers and we gave it to each other like brothers. That's how it was. Richie was there. Chef was, was the guy who steered the ship. And Richie was the one that was just giving the instructions, do this, do this. He's the not he's he's he he learns at such an incredible rate. His absorption of knowledge is unbelievable. And then he's smart enough to put it into things and he's built an unbelievable system in terms of jujitsu. You go to their jujitsu school, it's it's packed mm. because it's a good environment in terms of learning how to be a fighter. Yeah. And to be a he has this exceptional brain in terms of converting that into a combat scenario you know and we just we had to change and adapt all the time but yeah. we did so we adapted with however things were going we we kept working for each other but from a even like from a diet point of view from a conditioning point of view gas tanks were you know what i mean like the ground game the stand-up you guys just seemed to put it all together and you were leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else but it was a thing of everybody trying to be the best version of themselves in that gym you know and though and then guys smart guys no one there was a fool chef was he, he was a he ran a big kitchen for sun international before he left yeah. so his his business brain was he had that Richie, this super smart. All the guys around us, my, our teammates were, yeah. they were all trying to ma improve themselves and everybody bought a little bit to the party. And we just dis made ourselves better machines, better athletes, more yeah. professional. We seek that more. We wanted to be more. We wanted to be on the top. UFC was our goal. That's what we set. That's what we were chasing. And when you finally got the UFC, can you, do you remember the day that contract arrived or the, hey, listen, Gareth, UFC wants you. Do you remember that? So the I mean, obviously the, you remember it, but what were you? There was there was so much happening. You know, uh, UFC uh, UFC had already expressed interest to us long before that. Uh, oh, so they knew. Yeah, well, I mean, they, Militia, they knew. Who, they Gareth, knew. Who, they were. They were through, yeah. I mean, obviously they had been keeping an eye because they were, they were making noise. You know, we'd also traveled across the globe. We were traveling the globe and we were spending time in gyms. People were getting to know us. People that were already names in the UFC and had influence. 
So, we, I mean, EFC and its fighters war have always been in the conversation. They've always kept an eye on us. That's why we've got so many guys who've been signed through yeah. EFC in, in the UFC. People are, and good fighters. Good, good fighters. But, I mean, we just, we adapted and we molded. And as it grew and it got more, we, we were constantly trying to build ourselves in a direction. And we worked hard, man. Yeah. I, 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 all that other stuff. All the fa the newspapers and the articles and EFC, amazing. You know, it was a byproduct of what happened in that gym. Yeah, we got on there as a matter. We gave a hundred percent of ourselves, die hard. Everything that we could muster, we would we would give on those mats. Is that inscription? What who who bleeds but with me? Thy sheds his blood with me shall forever be, be my brother. There we go. Yeah, and we lived that, eh? Yeah. Yeah, you did. We lived that. That was that was our, our calling and that's what we went for. Take us on this UFC journey because that must have been exciting in the gym. There's a guy from Fight for Militia that has been signed to the UFC, which is the world's biggest promotion. What was it like there? Because it, it must have been a buzz. Or, you know, I think of your first assignment going to the UFC. You must have been like just, was it nerves? Was it excitement? Was it like... I've finally been recognized for the hard work. What was it like? Tell us. So, well, yeah, man. I, I, funny enough, um, at that stage, I, I was, uh, let's go a little bit back. I was signed to fight Drekus and I was seriously considering, you know, calling it a day after Drekus. For real? Yeah, I just, I didn't, for some reason, I started to lose desire. Okay. That was 2014, eh? <sighs> August 30th. You know, you fought so many rounds so hard for so long you start you start to tame that animal you start to lose that desire to want to be violent mm. because that's what it takes yeah you have to be comfortable with being violent in there was it a flick of a switch to get that violence or did you bring it into the hex or the octopus? it was always there it's always okay. been there um i just had certain individuals that helped me control it sure. and then I could process it in a certain way and I knew when to bring it out and when to take but it away that's actually a fascinating thing and I'm sorry to have interrupted you because I think also you guys were the first to do sort of like a mental triggering yes with, and it yeah, was, yeah. you so had like we, army operatives come in so we, had, we, 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 we dealt away. with we dealt with some people that helped us develop yeah. our brains in a, in a combat way and man different ball game completely See, different ball game, but just the it it changed the way we operated like this. Yeah. So you know, it taught us how to be killers in a control environment. Yeah. Um, was it like a word, or was it a sequence? Well, or? it was a sequence of words that okay. we built up over a period of time. Oh, okay. That would eventually get to one word that would control you or a sentence that you would you would voice yourself that would make you switch on. And it weird, it's weird because it's not this like psychotic, rah, it's yeah, yeah. just laser focus. Like I I saw nothing around me. It went dark around me. It was me and what was ever was in front of me. Yeah. And I wanted to find the fastest way to finish you. Yeah. That was what I was good at. That's what made Soldier Boy. Mm. And I drilled sequences and sequences and sequences over and over and over and over again, different scenarios. Rich would put the sequences together and I would just drum them into me. So by the time I came to the fight game, I had the ability to go, adjust, go, just stay. Sometimes it was quick. What? And yeah. that direct channel worked out for yeah. me. And then, I mean, I got into some wars as well. No, you <laughs> you know where, but I was prepared for it yeah. mentally. I was prepared to go the distance, prepared to outlast, stay ahead all the time. Yeah. Um, also, you you have an iconic walkout song. I mean, Metallica is obviously what a song though. I, I mean, <laughs> into the sand. I, I mean, like, it's it. Whenever I hear it now, I'm like, "Where's Soldier Boy?" You know, it's just it's in, like one of my all time favorite things. That song I've loved since I was a since I was a kid. Yeah, and it just has different memories for me, and it just at different stages in my life, it's got it's got memories attached yeah. to it. That just made me, I don't know how to explain it, like it It made me grateful. Grateful for the opportunities that I had. 
Yeah. It was weird. It's weird that it's attached to it's that. It's not but like a, a, you go red line and you want to No, it just else, gave yeah. me that energy of yeah. like, man, look at another moment. Yeah. Another big moment for me. You know, and every time I walked out there, I was I understood how big the moment was yeah. every time. Uh, and I think that's like you talk about that trick is fine. You're still the only well, he's there's two two of you who have beaten him. And I'm sure you remind him often <laughs> about it. Well, he reminds you. But that trick is you got the win, um, EFC 33. And did that win change your mind to keep going? Or what happened there? Well, so as I was saying, it was the pre that I was like, mm, I'm not sure if I want to do this. I want I was seriously considering retiring. Just family business and work. Yeah, That's I mean, there was just opportunities, and I think I had done enough. Okay. I thought then I had done enough already <laughs> um, to have given the sport life and opportunity yeah. and, and stuff. And, uh, yeah, and then afterwards, my wife had been working very hard in the background to get it set up. Um, she had been having conversations with people. Obviously, she then chatted to, to Rich about it, and um, after the fight, you know, Rich told me that uh, – that I'd, I, if I, that I'd won and I'd been signed, and that I was like, it was such a surreal moment because that's what I'd been working for. Yeah. And I, I got this mate Matt Miller. We laugh about this all the time. <laughs> they used to call me excuse it in uh, and my mates back in Devon because I always had an excuse why not to. <laughs> and uh, we were at his house. We were playing PlayStation. We were playing UFC, and there was a promo. And I was like, I can fight these guys. And uh, he, he was like, shut up. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, just keep quiet. And I promise you, that was a, that was where, where I, was, I was playing rugby and I was training the MMA. That's where I was like, I'm going to do this. And I, I mean, that was the start of it. Yeah. And that's where I went 100% in, in it. Um, and that obviously there was different building blocks to where I got, but that was kind of the deciding moment where I was like, okay, cool, I'm going after this. Um, yeah, man, it's just, it's funny how different moments meant different things to yeah. me, you know? That was such a big moment. Like, it was like, I made it. Yeah. You know, but then I had to adjust because my I had set this bar and <laughs> I was there, I was like, Okay, now what? Yeah, you know, and we, I, I had to, I had to change and adapt and be more out of it. And you know, the funny thing is, if I look at my U, U, UFC journey, no matter my camp that I did or the training that I did, I, I had the best. I had the best preparation-wise. I was the best I'd ever been prepared going into those spaces. Even Boracino, which I took on two two weeks' notice, Pala I got Costa. there. Yeah. I mean, pa, uh, yeah, pa, yeah, yeah, Boracino. Yeah, no, no, I know. Two weeks' saying. notice, I took this thing. I flew to New Zealand, but what I got in New Zealand, if you had given me six six months of that, different story with that guy. And I, mean, I can guarantee, I almost, I would bet anything on it. But listen, he was also. Um he was quite thick at the time. <laughs> yeah. He was quite big. But that's what you do with but it. No, no I, I Unfortunately, understand. that's what you know you're getting. Yeah. Look, you know, I knew what I was getting. I knew sure. what was happening. I wasn't, I'm not stupid. You know, I was getting thrown to Noku. They were trying to make Absolutely. the thing we, but the unfortunate part about me is like, oh, oh, I'm there. Yeah. Okay. So you flew to New Zealand, right? For your camp. Yeah. And then it was in Brazil, right? You fought him in Brazil. Uh, fought Fort yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> the I, baddest I, <laughs> experience. But I remember, yeah, but tell me. Ever. Because even at breakfast, you said you were like on your own. They were hostile to you. Bro, it was the wildest, wildest thing ever. I'd booked and paid for a hotel in the thing. So they first threw me a wobble and moved my coaches to another hotel. Sorry, we don't have any space. They must go somewhere else. So now we weren't together as a team. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so they isolated me okay. from my team. Yeah, so they're already starting. Yeah. yeah, and then they they sent some some chick who couldn't even speak English to me to 
kind of every time I had a problem, I'd go to her and say, hey, and she'd be like, hey, 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 and nothing would happen. <laughs> okay. I would be at, at, at trying to eat and uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't serve me. Like, I would wait for my food. Hafa Cordero, who's Calvin Gaston, was Calvin Gaston's coach. He's a Brazilian. He eventually was like, hey, come sit with us and then sorted the food out. Jeez. It was crazy. It was like, I still to this day don't think he made weight. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a lot of chaos going on when he was in the way in the weighing area. He was he wanted to fight me backstage. Calvin Gaston again was like, "Hey, calm down, bro." Yeah. <laughs> and like it was just my coach from New Zealand, the Brazilian black belt who I who trained me. Um, obviously Brazilian. He, 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 I don't think he could believe what was happening. Like they just they, they they were so rude to him as well. He would ask for things and they would just be like, "Hey, you you're the enemy." Um, going out, so now you know. Like this is you haven't really prepared for this. So like you Two weeks later. just like cool. Yeah. I'm biting my gum garden. He's I'm, huge. <laughs> uh, he's huge. I'm going for this thing. I'm gonna bite my gum garden. I'm gonna go. And when we walked out, it was so loud. I couldn't even hear my workout workout music. The things they were saying to me, the, uh, uh, my Brazilian coach was, <laughs> I think he was terrified actually because he, he said the things that were said were were unreal, but I couldn't hear it was Portuguese. So, <laughs> I say, okay, whatever, man. but it was j- I could just remember it was so loud, yeah. and I walked in and when I looked at the psycho, I was like, "Ha! Huh, how did you get that big?" He was massive. So I was like, okay. What can I do? I'm here. I'm here. Go Let's on, dance. Go on, walk out. Let's go. And it's funny because Jason, who was coaching me in New Zealand, who was one, who was my first MMA coach, um, and probably the guy who had one of the, the most profound effects on me in terms of trying to teach me who to be as a person. Um, he... He was there with me. Um, like, he just looked at me as well and I was like, what? I mean, it was unreal. We were sitting afterwards, after the fight, and he was like, did you even fight? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> like, it was just, just yeah. it was just so intense and so fast. And like, it's funny though, because... I kind of knew going there that I shouldn't be going. Uh, I kind of went there knowing that I was going to lose. And it was funny in the hotel, my son, who was who I'd spent most of his life away from, he was on the phone and he had, he had learned how to speak. He was kind of communicating in that. And he said to me, Daddy, you're my hero. And that kind of, the emotion that I got from that. And I was like, what am I doing? I'm halfway across the world, unprepared. Yeah. In, so unprepared to go in into this war. Den. Like you're in hostile territory. Yeah. You you've got people that are there that are trying to help you, but they don't know you. And I was just like Gareth. So in the time he caught me with a big hook and I went down. It was funny, he caught me by I just didn't see the hook and it dropped me and I was back already. But he when he was on top of me, I it was kind of like and he was huge. It was kind of like to myself, like, okay, well, you know, you can either get smashed here or just protect yourself. And yeah. I protected myself and they called the fight. Yeah. And, you know, my thought was going through, I knew what it was going to take to beat this guy. Already then and there. I was going to walk out there, potentially could lose my life. I could, I was going to have to take a hiding to stop yeah. this guy. And I think at that stage with my son and what he had said, I was like, not worth it. Yeah. Fortunately, that was the end of the road in the UFC career. Yeah, look, e- even though you you only had the one win against Baba Bush, I mean, that must have been something amazing, though, because that that feeling of actually getting a W, getting your hand raised in the UFC, not many people can say they've, they've done that. The UFC taught me a lot of things. I took more from my UFC journey than I, t- I took from my UFC journey. Um, there were defining moments. There were different moments. They taught me different things about myself and who I am today. And what I want to be, um, I see my future in front of me in the platform that I have to be as successful as I want, and that's what I'm driven towards. Um, but I, 
I had to learn from each moment. It wasn't the greatest journey. I do believe that I was a lot more than what I offered. I do believe I could have won a hell of a lot more fights. I do believe that uh, my loss in Rotterdam's seed and blood was for different circumstances. And I, that guy I knew in my heart, at the weigh-in, when I looked him in his eyes, I knew I had him. And I knew that I could put him away. And I didn't follow through to, on that. And that was for different reasons, but that was, that for me was a defining moment. I allowed other factors to control my performance, which I should never have. Yeah. And then I went to, to uh, Canada. Man, Canada for me is, is this fight I learned the most about myself. I came off, I came on the losing end. I believe I won it. To this day, I still believe I won it. Um, yeah, split decision. You know, but that's just kind of the sport. You can't yeah. leave it to the judges. No, you you can't, can't give them an opportunity to decide, to decide different. You have to finish. You have to have to be a killer and you have to finish. That's what the best guys in the world do. They finish. Yeah. yeah they're not there for a long time. No ways. Yeah, they sometimes have to eke out a win, but m for most times they're putting guys yeah. away. They find ways to finish. Yeah, but it was a fight that taught me the most about actually what I have inside me and what I can be and what I'm willing to accept. Um, it, would, it changed me. It was a big moment. That loss was a big moment to change the direction of me and my MMA career and where I was at in terms of FFM um, and going on my own. Yeah, it changed a lot. There a lot changed in that fight. It, and that fight broke me. That, fi that fight was kind of the defining moment where I was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, you know, and then obviously it led into the Boricino fight, and I was like, "Stuff it, it's money." I'm yeah. going. Was it good money? It was good money. Okay, it was good money. It was, the money was worth it. Yeah, dollars. I suppose at that stage, the money was worth it. Yeah, you know, life as a fighter wasn't so easy. Let no. me tell you something. <laughs> I had moments where I was, where I did exceptionally well, and there were I had moments when I didn't. Coming out the back end of uh, of UFC, the the bank account wasn't so big. You know, and the money wasn't flowing in. The sponsors weren't there. They'd slowly died off. They'd moved in a different direction. Mm. You know, it was tough. It was tough. It was very tough for me. I left the MMA for for a time being there. I was done. I didn't want anything to do with it after UFC. I took it. Took a lot from me. It yeah. took took from took for, from my soul. It you know, I was a broken man leaving that and. Uh, I needed to find myself again. Yeah. And you did though. In, I think in other I still ways. am. Yeah, yeah. I still am finding myself. Yeah. It's been a long journey from there to rebuild who I am as a person and what my beliefs are and what I want. You know, I, I, I grew nicely. I pulled myself up. And then it, confidence got shattered again. And then I kind of left it again and was like, okay, I need to focus on being a businessman and yeah. pointing myself in that direction and got involved in my family business, you know. The loss to Brendan Lazar was tough. The Brendan Lazar fight, many people still talk about it to this day. What made you go for that fight? Why, why did you take him on? What, was it something to sort of to sign off a career, to sort of as a legacy thing? It started out, you know, me wanting to prove to myself that I was still capable. You know, it started out with me wanting to say, okay, I leave on my terms. Mm. I leave with a win. I restore my my faith in myself. And then it has a knock-on effect to everything else. Um, that was the beginning. And then obviously I was training. I was training with Shauna and Costa and yeah. with DeMott and, and Timba and... I was getting good good training. I was working hard uh, on my conditioning. I was physically in great shape, um, you know. And I, uh, I came back to UFC and I was like, I'm ready. At that stage, that portion, I think it was the best that I had ever felt as a fighter. I was just, uh, my confidence was through the roof, and I was like, I'd gotten over everything. I, I had dealt with all those emotions and got rid of them. I could be focused on just fighting. I, started to build this soldier boy who I wanted and how, uh, to represent myself and as it went the confidence came back and I went to see I want to fight and I wanted to and 
was, that was the fight that I wanted. Yeah. Uh, that was in the conversation. It was a whole lot of things. And it was for middleweight belt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a back and forth and it then so happened and Brendan Lazar came to me at uh, an event that I was having at the, at the gym and he was like hey you know there's an opportunity here they want to do the show uh, fight for the number one contender to fight Trickus you know because he was the guy that was in and I kind of thought about it and I was like you know what it's actually not a bad idea maybe you just get in there get get it out get a win and then go after Drickus. It's the thing we, obviously then Drickus was out. He, he wasn't able to fight. Um, and the discussion of it being an in interim belt c yeah. came up and I agreed and Brendan agreed. Then we went on the show. Yeah, the fighter, yeah. Show was great. It was an amazing experience. Uh, you know, really gave me a different perception on, on fighting as opposed to a fighter being a coach and the emotion behind that. Did it was it tough. It was a tough series. It was it was it was very emotional, and I mean, in certain instances, um, but it was also exciting. It was yeah. fun. It was like it, it just held a lot of different things for me. Did it spark your love of coaching, too? Because I can see it made me realize that I that I I I love to to impart. Yeah. I, Am I the perfect coach? Am I the guy that's going to make it? Which happen? I don't know. I, yeah, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I actually really don't know. Um, I know that I have an immense amount of knowledge to part, and I will give. You take it and you do what you yeah. want with it. I don't. I don't expect you to be that. I just give you what I know and 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 guidance. And if you take it, you take it. If you don't, you don't. That's that's your prerogative, not mine. Yeah. You know. Um. I think that's what it's about. Yeah. Just understanding whether or not the information you're getting supplied from people is valuable or not. Yeah. So let's, Tyler, let's just have a look here. Uh, Gareth, if you don't mind, uh, courtesy of DAZN, uh, this is this EFC 80 back in June of 2019. Uh, just roll it here. I mean, he's in great shape. You, you looked like you were very comfortable. I had... <sighs> I, oh man, the oh wow! Is it tough to watch that? That might sound like a stupid question, but does yeah, it, it you tough? never want to see yourself looking like that. Um, but it's a moment; it happens. You know, I think that's what I had to deal with. I had to understand why it happened. Yeah. Um, I under had to understand how it happened. Yeah. You know, I had to deal with the emotion of it happening. It was tough. It was tough. It was to lose in that fashion. I don't think many people saw it coming. No one actually gave Brendan a chance. In all honesty, the, I was so dominant for that first three minutes yeah. of the fight. I was so comfortable. I'd worked so hard. I mean, there was this comments passed around that, you know, that Brendan outworked me. Impossible. There was, I, I don't care what anybody says. I built my career on being the hardest working oak out there. I put so much time into that fight. And for it to end like that is heartbreaking. Like, it just destroyed me. It really, it was like, I was like... Oh, man. I, 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 I at, no, at no stage did I walk in there at one second thinking, I'm going to lose this fight. Yeah. I knew I had every single tool to put that guy away. I had an interesting discussion with him before, Brian. I said to him, Brian, you're going to have to knock me out. The only way you win this fight is you put me to sleep. And he did that. Kudos. That's and a, a, one punch. Uh, he, man, with look, at that weight, with those gloves, yeah, the no, right punch, it's no. a different ball game. Absolutely. I mean, I stood in, I didn't stand a chance. I didn't see it. That's the thing. It came out of nowhere. It caught me 100% by surprise. And it's something that he had worked on, you yeah. know. And under that extreme pressure, when he was he was under the pump, he, he picked it and it <laughs> It, one line, of the man. biggest, <laughs> yeah. the biggest punches in EFC history, defining moments, yeah. you know, in the sports. So you, you, you know, I had a big role to play in him, yeah. right? on the good side and the bad no. side for me, but all moments. And you know, I, I, I respect everybody that sure. I got in there with. Uh, people don't understand, and I wish people would take the time to understand what fighters put themselves through, and what they have to go through to achieve those those hearts. It's not easy, man. That's a lonely journey. Yeah. It's it eats at you, you know. It brings so many different emotions, highs and lows, and the physical. Um, how do I say this, man? Like 
the depletion yeah. in you from what you do day in, day out is is mind boggling. The places we need to take ourselves mentally to get through is Unreal. is quite a remarkable thing. Um you know, so I just wish people would respect that more. You you though are not done with MMA because you might not have officially retired or uh, fl- you know flirting, but the fact of the matter is you're still imparting knowledge on people. I've seen what you've done with Iga Cabeza. I've seen the the stuff you're doing with Drikus. I don't know if I can say it, but you are actively involved there. So, look, I mean, the, uh, all those guys are... All those guys have their own journeys. They have their key men around them that are developing them into unbelievable athletes. Yeah. I'm just a soundboard man. I've got, I've got knowledge. I give it to them, and they do what they want with it. Mm. You know, if it's a defining moment in 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 their journey, amazing. Then I've done what I was I was supposed to. If it's information that they don't utilize, then you know, so be it. That's it's for them to build themselves. I just see things differently. I've been in the game a long time. I understand it, and uh, I give a bit of my wisdom. It's an it's an old dog giving these young animals a, a, a bit of what he sees, and hopefully it continues to make them fighters that they are. You know, I I give what I can. I I I wish I could give more, and I wish I could be in more involved. Um, but unfortunately, I can't. My life is just. You know, from my from our businesses, and I've got a gym now, and yeah, that investment. Yeah, on the gym, and, by the way. And ju- but just being around the fight game, I think, is important. You yeah. know, we sh- we have so much experience, and I wish that those guys would be in as well, and talking to guys and giving them some wisdom. And this is what I did that helped me in a certain scenario. And you might fix one space for them, but it's you fixing that space. We as a community need to start being together. We n- we compete in EFC against each other, which is Yes, but we also have guys that are competing on an international level that need us to be giving more to them and feeding them more knowledge so that they can represent us better and make what we've tried to build over the last 10 years that much stronger and a piece of history in the global sphere. Gareth, you're a legend, pioneer. Your IP in MMA and experience needs to live within MMA. And I hope more guys reach out to you. But it's been an honor and a privilege to have you on. Thanks so much. And you've had an incredible career. And I look forward to uh, hearing your commentary and your insights on the EFC as we go. Because I think your knowledge is a second to none in South Africa. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, and thank you for having me. And good coffee. That's what I like to hear.